Good morning, folks. Welcome back to the Philosophy for Philistines channel, also known as Politics for Plebeians. I'm your host, Bill Reimer. Make sure you're subscribed. Ring that bell. And I promise you, I will never ask you to become a Patreon supporter, nor will I ever ask for a dime. I am only interested in the truth and in discussing such with willing listeners. Today we are going to discuss the soft bigotry of lowered expectations because society is rife with it today. Brilliant writers have dedicated volumes to this theme, but few more eloquently define this phenomenon than Douglas Murray's latest book, The War on the West, where he writes about the pathological nature of Western anti-Westernism. Its prologue on Amazon's website reads, China has concentration camps now. Why do Westerners claim our sins are unique? It is now vogue to celebrate non-Western cultures and disparage Western ones. Some of this is a much needed reckoning, but much of it fatally undermines the very things that created the greatest, most humane civilization in the world. In the War on the West, Douglas Murray shows how well-meaning people have been fooled by hypocritical and inconsistent anti-Western rhetoric. After all, if we must discard the ideas of Kant, Hume, and Mill for their opinions on race, shouldn't we discard, discard Marx, whose work is peppered with racial slurs and anti-Semitism? Embers of racism remain to be stamped out in America. But what about the raging racist inferno in the Middle East and Asia? It is not just dishonored scholars who benefit from this intellectual fraud, but hostile nations and human rights abusers hoping to distract from their own ongoing villainy. Dictators who slaughter their own people are happy to jump on the America is a racist country bandwagon and mimic the language of anti-racism and pro-just movements as PR while making authoritarian conquests. If the West is to survive, it must be defended. The war on the West is not only an incisive takedown of foolish anti-Western arguments, but also a rigorous new apologetic for civilization itself and a prologue. We live at a time when everything originating from Western culture is deemed to be bad, while all other cultures, particularly those of visible minorities, are deemed to be superior to that of our own. Where these postmodern ideas lose their own consistency lies in postmodernism's loathing of patriarchal patriarchal condescension. Yet, what could be more patriarchal and condescending than to expect less of other cultures? Herein lies the soft bigotry of lowered expectations. The Norwegian Labour Party, Arbeite Partiet, has a slogan, All Us Go Made, which translates into something like everyone together, or no one shall be left behind. But the actual outcome of this policy is much different. It should read, all of any, or everyone must agree. It is an attempt to homogenize humanity, to create a state where all are deemed to be essentially the same, where everyone is required to think the same. Yet when we examine the failure of the state's attempt to assimilate cultures who hold vastly different world views, we see that all a scale made is created a race to build a system which favors the lowest common denominator. I know. I attended Norskush, 
where the failure was on full display. I deliberately chose to attend the local Norskush, Norwegian course, in a small city where I lived, so that I could observe firsthand how well my fellow, fellow students were adjusting to life in Norway. They weren't. And the authorities didn't want me to adapt either, out of some perverse dislike of someone whom they undoubted, undoubtedly viewed as too fond of their culture. I came to understand that the socialists who dominated state-run institutions were leery of anyone who admired them, since the Nazis had attempted to appropriate their culture during the war, even though the Arbeiter Party had made repeated attempts to join the Nazi puppet regime under Vidcom Quisling. A law was passed at war's end, which made it illegal for anyone to investigate who had cooperated with the Nazis. The reason I state these things is that the self-same ideological nonsense of all a scale made informs every single policy in Canada put forth by our governments, federally, provincially, regionally, and locally. We are driven by a species of self-loathing that has become nothing short of pathological, while deliberately ignoring the work our ancestors did to help create a free and just society under democratic parliamentary oversight and the rule of law. From the Canadian Encyclopedia, on the 14th of March, 1793, United Empire Loyalist Sergeant Adam Vrooman violently bound Chloe Cooley, a black woman he enslaved, with a rope. He was assisted by two other men, his brother Isaac Vrooman and one of the five sons of United Empire Loyalist McGregory Van Every. The men put Cooley in a boat and transported her across the Niagara River to sell her in New York State. Cooley resisted fiercely, but to no avail. Cooley's piercing scream alerted Peter Martin, a black loyalist formerly enslaved by John Butler, to what was transpiring. Peter Martin, a veteran of Butler's Rangers along with witness William Grizzly, reported the incident to Lieutenant Colonel John Graves Simcoe and the Executive Council of Upper Canada and Newark, now Niagara on the Lake. Grizzly, a white resident of nearby Mississauga Point, an employee and employee of Sergeant Vrooman's, was able to provide a detailed account of the events as he was on the boat that transported Cooley, but did not assist in restraining her. Lieutenant Governor Simcoe used the Chloe Cooley incident to introduce legislation to abolish slavery in Upper Canada. Enslavement in Upper Canada. British abolitionists such as William Wilberforce, James Ramsey, Granville Sharp, and Thomas Clarkson had argued against the Atlantic slave trade since the, 19, the 1770s. Lieutenant Governor John Graves Simcoe had been influenced by the growing abolitionist movement prior to his arrival in Upper Canada in 1791. By then, abolitionists of African heritage were also playing a vital role in the struggle. Oluda Equiano, also known as Gustav Vaza, once enslaved in England, published his autobiography in 1789 and toured the United Kingdom to speak out against the inhumanity of enslavement. These abolition opinions spread to Upper Canada, where Simcoe and Attorney General John White led the call for abolition in the province. The result of Simcoe's actions resulted in making my own hometown of St. Catharines. That was the end of that quote, by the way. Uh, the result of Simcoe's actions resulted in making my own hometown of St. Catharines one of the northern terminuses on the Underground Railroad. Harriet Tubman lived in my city, who acted as Moses did to the Israelites by leading her people to the Promised Land. Upper Canada, now Ontario, 
was known as Beulah Land to the folks escaping from slavery in the slave states, states in the USA. Harriet Tubman was given land by the founder of the Welland Canal, William uh, Merritt, William Hamilton Merritt, to build the British Methodist Episcopal Church, which still stands on Geneva Street. The British Methodist Episcopal Church, Salem Chapel, was founded in 1820 by African American freedom seekers in St. Catharines, Ontario. It is located at 92 Geneva Street in the heart of Old St. Catharines. The church is a valued historical site due to its design and its important associations with abolitionist activity. The church has a congregation of approximately 20 people and a Sunday worship service takes place at 11 a.m. Guided tours of the church and museum, which displays original documents, artifacts, and a rare book collection, all associated with the anti-slavery movement, are available by appointment. Folks from St. Catharines would accompany Tubman during her trips into the slave states, most often Maryland, so that she would avoid suspicion by pretending to be her slave owner. This, this is obviously not an example of white privilege or patriarchal tyranny, since the people accompanying her could easily have been imprisoned if they had been caught. Yet how often does one hear of such factual accounts of bravery and fortitude where whites and blacks together worked to abolish an institution which Simcoe himself had declared an offense to Christ. The act passed by him was the first of its kind in the British Empire, which eventually led to slavery within the empire being abolished by 1833. I state these things to make a very concerted and clear point Slavery has continued unabated in Africa, China, and the Middle East to this day, where cultures vastly different to that of our own do not view slavery as an offense to Christ, since they aren't Christian societies. Every society which has ever existed has practiced slavery, including that of North America's indigenous people. Therefore, the question that must be asked, which society both denounced and abolished it first? And, as Murray so eloquently pointed out, the postmodern answer to our tradition of Western liberalism and its insistence on individual liberty and autonomy is to replace the most liberating philosophical ideas which any society has ever created with Marxist ideology which demonstrably has resulted in the greatest injustices mankind has ever witnessed, which exceed the murderous tyranny of National Socialism. Furthermore, we must never forget that Nazism was just one more version of the species of social collectivism being foisted on us by postmodern ideologues whose claims of creating equity visibly and demonstrably deconstruct themselves. These are some things to think and pray about. Share this podcast with your friends and family. Discuss it openly. Dare to challenge the narrative that is literally poisoning. Here in Canada, literally poisoning our social discourse. Almost no one remembers our own past. But I grew up in St. Catharines, and I'm a blues musician, and many of the folks that Tubman brought north to freedom are my personal friends. God bless you all. Here's to think some things to think and pray about. And again, make sure you subscribe, ring that bell, and you'll also see this appearing on Rumble as well as on YouTube. Take good care.